Well, fellows, welcome home, man. It's been a couple of years since Thank you guys you. have played around here, huh? Yeah, the last time I was over at the uh, stadium, was, it was was going to be our farewell tour. That's and, right, one of yeah. many, yeah. Yeah, who was there? Anybody there? Or yeah. Thank you for coming out, but we're back by popular demand. Uh, <laughs> you ain't kidding. <laughs> no, no, actually what happened, of course, COVID hit, and 2020 was supposed to be our last year. And uh, we had shows on the, for the whole year. I mean, it was going to be the very end of it. And uh, after they opened back up, we, we were obligated to go out and play those shows. So I was just telling somebody a while ago, I said, Gary was backstage. And he was like, you know what, man? I figured it out, Bubba. He said, you know what? Musicians don't retire. We just play less shows. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. We're, we're back. So. Well, you know, Skinner's been one of those bands who might have had designs on figuring out a way to walk away from the game, but something keeps pulling you guys back. The fans? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The I fans. think that the, uh, the outcry, you know, after it was done, uh, when it was known that we were going to actually end it, uh, what happened was after COVID, everybody goes, please don't let this be the yeah. end of it, yeah. you know? You guys have got to keep coming out, and you've got to keep – playing for us and, and the music, and Gary was actually the one uh, that made the decision afterwards yeah. to say, hey, we need to, we need to keep this rolling, and Gary named it uh, the Big Wheels Keep On Rolling Tour, <laughs> and yeah. uh, it was all because of Gary, and Gary was the one. And you know what? To be very honest, we miss the fans. There's whole generations out there that never got to experience the live music of Leonard Skinner. Yeah. And uh, right. there you go. One right here in the front row. Yeah. There you go. I'm so <laughs> that's awesome that's great and uh you know what we've had young kids come up and say please keep playing you know so if the good lord keeps us in health we'll be out there for a few more years so yeah okay. that's the way we look at it yeah you know it was really amazing we just got back from brazil and uh let me tell you you would have thought the Beatles walked out on stage. <laughs> Mick Jagger and Paul McCartney was I out mean, there. Yeah. It was amazing, and they were very, it was all very young. There was very, very few older people there, and it was all in the age groups of teenagers up to your mid-30s. Uh, it was amazing. We had about a little over 40,000 people in two days. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. You were really it was crazy. excited, aren't you? What is your name? <laughs> <laughs> Teresa. Oh, I was like last week. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, kidding. Leonard I'm Skinner kidding. is a diaper to diaper man. Yeah, I diaper to diaper man. Start, if we stick mean, around long enough, we're going to be wearing them everybody. again. <laughs> so, you guys, we just talked about Gary Rossington. Obviously, yeah. a huge loss. Ah, now, loss. Uh, he was one of the original big three sure. of the founding of the band. Mm -hmm. well, you know, what was the uh, conversation like to carry on? And uh, what's the situation with the estates? Well, after that, after his untimely passing we talked a lot and again everybody who's ever been a part of Skinner's a family you know yeah, it really right. is it's a big family and me and Ricky we stated our case what we just stated to you guys you know about the young fans and carrying it on and Gary wanted it to carry on you know the last couple of years he really didn't go out with us that much he made special appearances and we made one in November last year and uh, I hear that Florida rain up yeah, there, buddy. yeah. Uh, and uh, we did it at the Ryman Auditorium. It was last performance with us, and it was amazing. We got to hang out in the dressing room. If you ever been to the Ryman backstage, they're like little, they're like almost bathrooms. <laughs> 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 and me, Ricky, and Donnie, my brother, were all in this room, and we were just crammed in, and we were telling old stories. It was the wonderfulest time. Looking back, probably that I have ever had on the road with trying to just because of the situation, this was his last show. And, uh, you know, we know that he wanted, or we knew that he wanted us to carry on. And, uh, you know what, since 87, 86, since I've been here, I've been here 36 years now, it seems like 36 seconds. And uh, he wanted us to carry on, and he carried on for his brothers, you know, and carried this music that they wrote many many years ago and uh 
you know what? We're going to carry it on for him. Yeah. We're going to give him his just due. You know, not many people realize that Skinner's legacy isn't just about the touring, the years and years of touring, but there are a ton of studio albums that came from the band even recently over the past 10, 15, 20 years. Do you guys think you'll continue to release albums or is it just touring for you guys? How do you plan on tackling this as you move forward? Actually, Johnny and Gary and myself, we, uh, we went in the studio and actually cut la a song called Last of the Street Survivors which is that was the tour, you know, that it was named after. And uh, we called ourselves, we formed our little production team called Three Southern Gents. And uh, we produced this song, and fortunately it was able to come out. And uh, we had talked about it. We found tons of material that we had written all these years that never got recorded and has never been released. So therefore we decided, hey, you know what? Let's probably record again and put another record out. So there, that's where Johnny Gary, and I are Gary now. was the master guys of, uh, you know, <laughs> on your phones you have voice, Mel, you know, voice Notes. recordings you can yeah. do these days. But yeah. Gary would come into a writing session with an old cassette player. <laughs> <laughs> One of those ones like this yeah. long oh, rectangle. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And so out there, actually, I gotta, we got to talk to his wife, Dale, because he has – tons of songs that we said well you go ahead and record them you know whenever we started writing them so there's a lot of songs and hopefully who knows hey i always say everything's in god's hands and uh you know that's the reason why we're here today yeah so. you know with the advent of the latest technology artificial intelligence and this kind of thing you're finding some of these bands who have past members who have passed and they're adding them to new music and new albums you guys see skinner doing that maybe with pieces that gary have has left behind well we actually do a thing live on freebird ronnie sings live on freebird so oh, it's yeah. pretty pretty amazing thing and uh uh you know at times i go hey i wish he sang it all but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i never wanted to sing that song you know and i for the first few years of skinner i really didn't i mean they did it instrumentally and we'd put a mic on there and we were out in sacramento and uh, they went off at we went off after Sweet Home and uh, sorry man I'm I'm looking at everybody else. Just, you can look Andy, at the audience you Andy, can look at the camera don't worry about, I I'm, feel like I'm ignoring you I'm his wife has the same problem don't worry about I'm, it I'm I'm basking in your glow and also sweating like a pig I know it so, is hot up yeah. here but uh, anyway we were playing Sacramento came off after Sweet Home as many years after I was with the band. And uh, Gary came to me. He says, I'm not going back out. And I said, what do you mean? you got to go out and play Freebird. He goes, I'm not going back out, not unless you go out and sing it. <laughs> Your brother was a songwriter and a singer, and he wrote those words, and he'd want you to sing it. You're singing all these other songs. So that night, I started singing Freebird. And, uh, so, but now doing it with Ronnie is very, very special. And uh, due to modern technology, we're able to do that. So if any of you are coming to the show and you haven't seen the show. Well... Get ready to bring if out some, all, some napkins if, on if that If you go one. all the way back to Leonard Skinner 20 record, yeah. we actually did Traveling Man. Yeah. And we, at that time, uh, brought Ronnie in, and Ronnie sang on Traveling Man with Johnny. So we felt like this year, like when we started the Street Survivors Farewell, you know, all of a sudden we felt like, hey, you know, why not bring Ronnie out and let Ronnie sing Free Bird along with Johnny? Let them share it together, you know, and that's hey, before where it's it over, came from. Before it's over with, Ronnie will be singing the whole set, and I'll be, <laughs> I'll be like the guy, you know, I went and seen B.B. King one no, time. No, I don't think there so. There was a guy that brought out a red Solo cup and a, and a towel for B.B., and I was sitting in the audience. For some reason, I went, wow, I'd have loved to have been that guy for Ronnie. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, in, in that case, I mean, like, there could hypothetically be – AI of Ronnie singing stuff from like 20 and beyond. Yeah. Well, how would you feel about that? We'll see. Hey, uh, <laughs> I wish he was here, my man. So I bet, yeah. anything we could we could do, you know, to make it as real as possible, I would I would be in. Yeah. As your brother, you know, obviously, you know, we all miss him because he was like, you know, legendary to us. But that's that's also your brother. So that's that's a deeper connection. And when you sing his songs. Do you feel uh, they take on a different meaning for you? Does it make you feel closer to him? or sure. Closer. And, uh, you know, I never – I've had – by the way, to, for all the critics out there, <laughs> I never wanted to be Ronnie, I'm Johnny. No, nobody ever – I don't uh, think that, yeah. You know, I've had people go, you need to wear a hat. I said, I don't wear hats. I don't look good. 
<laughs> I don't look good in one. I've never worn a hat in yeah. my life. <laughs> a baseball cap backwards <laughs> is my deal for a hat. But uh, I never tried to sing them like him. You know, surely you have to stay in the melody lines sure. and stuff. He had a much more of a grittier voice, and, and uh, he had that old whiskey voice sure, like that. Sure. Hell House whiskey over here. And uh, that was his style, you know, mm-hmm. and I never wanted to jump on anything that he really did i wanted to go hey i'm paying tribute to him and the music of leonard skinner and it's worked i guess because 36 years later i'm still here so uh, nobody fired me right yet. right and 36 <laughs> years that's a long time to be in any band yeah. you know any and business I, yeah i think of leonard skinner as like the way uh, a family home you know what i mean like a family home belongs to everybody in the family yeah. same thing with leonard skinner and you guys sure. you know what we're we are a big family and we've been up and down and all around and and it has been a tough year for us but i have to give kudos to our fans they have come out by the droves this year you know we've been out with zz top doing shows and uh we thought okay we might do nine ten thousand people a night you know two old fart bands <laughs> out you know playing and uh it's been 14 15 18 20 thousand people you know so it's been been amazing so yeah, i gotta thank the fans so thank all you guys anybody coming to our show y'all coming to our show yeah yeah you know guys you said you just got back from brazil we were talking the other day and we were kind of wondering what do you think is the country that has surprised you most with Skinner fans. I hear Leonard Skinner music and I think it is undeniably American. Oh, God. There's a bunch of them, really. I mean, we played, what, Helsinki years ago. and oh, I can remember, I can tell you one, we rolled up to a, a, a festival called Hellfest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and this was in France. And I remember <laughs> walking in and we were walking in into the tunnel here and there's a great big devil's head over the you know over the entrance way and Johnny looked at me and goes I don't know if we're gonna go over here <laughs> you know? but you know what we were we were celebrated as being the Cinderella band of the festival that day and uh, we kicked some major we've, booty and we've and been there back go. there now about five times so I always <laughs> say let's go to hell play some music and get the hell out <laughs> You go to, when you go to hell, you just keep going. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, let's go see I don't want to stay Skinner. there. <laughs> oh, Orange Red and Lenore Skinner. He is right, though. The band before us, I don't know who it was, but I kind of walked out, and I was looking at him, and the guy was out there. Oh, my God. It was Megadeth, right? Oh, it was Megadeth. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Megadeth. I couldn't understand but a word so, he said. It's really weird because they, like Motley Crue was on one of them, right? Yeah. And they were after us. And the whole band stood out on the side of the stage and watched us through the whole set. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we, we fit right in really anywhere. Yeah. You know, right after, right after we played Hellfest, we came back here and we did a country fest with yeah. Lady Annabella. Yeah. yeah. I was like... Okay, boy, does Skinner music fit in? <laughs> I really does. I think it's a lot like Jacksonville in that way because yeah. we're kind of all of that too oh, here yeah. in Jacksonville. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's amazing to me how many country fans are like Jelly Roll yeah. and uh, you know that are big time Skinner fans. Sure, you know? yeah. That thing that we did on PBS actually Jelly Roll uh, sang Tuesday's Gone with me, and we had uh, what's his name from yeah. uh, Shine Down, uh, Mr. Smith, I call him <laughs> Brett. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he sang Simple Man and. Very cool, cool uh, thing that we did. In, uh, yeah, in I remember you guys played Rockville not so yeah. long ago. And oh, that yeah. was the same kind of festival. And it's, you know, so many people were actually more excited to see you guys than anybody else yeah, on the bill. It, yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anywhere that you wish you would have got to that you didn't get to? Merle Haggard. <laughs> <laughs> George Jones. Some of those yeah. folks yeah. would have been great yeah. to play a show with. You mentioned uh, Jelly Roll is one of the newer artists out there getting it done all across the country. You yeah. guys are playing all these festivals now, doing these tours, where you have these bands who are just coming up or have been coming up for the last decade or so. Are there newer acts that you guys love to follow and listen to now that you're finding inspiration in? Yeah, I mean, a lot of them. Sorry, a lot of them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, you know, we I, I'm a, there's a group called Blackstone Cherry that oh, yeah. they're That's just great. one of my yeah. one they're to my guys, so <laughs> I'm always complimenting them Blackberry Smoke, mm-hmm. you know, so you know, they're out there. There's a band that I've started listening to quite regularly and they're called Rival Sons. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. And Rival Sons have got some great music and I've been listening to them quite regularly, you know. I even messaged them on uh, Instagram and 
the guy wrote back to me. He goes, God, I can't believe somebody in Leonard Skinner's <laughs> listening to us, you know. <laughs> but it's very cool. Is that a know? trip for you when people you're watching are looking at you go, wait, you're the idol, not me. You're the icon. Yeah. Well, I, I don't look at it that way. I just go. He's Ricky. You know, I look, I, I go. <laughs> no, I, seriously, I mean, I go out and I just do what I do, you know. I play guitar, and I love playing guitar. I love standing next to him. And, and being in the band, I mean, and I just go out and I play what I play, you know, because Gary is kind of Gary's the one that really put me back in the band. And uh, he when he got me in the band, he offered me a dollar fifty in a Snickers bar. <laughs> and I feel like inflation and, and has raised so, that point. That was my so, idea. So that now it's five <laughs> Snickers bars. So, so the deal was is several years later. Uh, we all get up on our bus, you know, Johnny and I got up on the bus with Dale and Gary and, there, and Dar- Gary and Dale walked to the back and I looked on the counter and there was a Snickers bar with a dollar fifty wrapped up in it. <laughs> and it and a note that says paid in full. Yeah. <laughs> no debts. <laughs> you know, Tech, you had mentioned that Jacksonville is like this melting pot of music yeah. or it can be. Why do you guys think that is this city has such a rich history with music? Uh, you know what the old saying is that it's in the water, you know. So, but I honestly think that most of these bands that were that came from Jacksonville were raised on the west side of Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. wasn't much to do, and it was very poor. And uh, you know what, music was a way out. You know, I always tell people most of my friends that I grew up with are either dead or in Rayford prison. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> music was a lot better way to go. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I think it was just a comic you know, a thing, you know, it really was. I mean, you think of all the bands, Blackfoot, 38 Special, Molly Hatchet, you know. Throw Shine Down Leonard on there, Skinner, too, yeah. Shine Down. Limp Biscuit. Limp Biscuit, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know. There's a lot of them. Uh, I, I had, a, the, my idea was, was that Jacksonville, not only what Johnny was saying, but Jacksonville was a big city. You know, you had the naval, the naval people, the Navy bases here. Uh, you had the steel workers who were down on the docks, down on the Jacks, on the St. John's River. And I think it was a big industrial kind of town to where it was a melting pot of people coming in. They had kids, and all of a sudden the kids could figure out how to play an instrument. Believe me, there's some kid in John. You play guitar? There you nice. go. Yeah. All right. There you, there you go. go. Some kid that's going to take it farther, you know. Whenever do you want to make a dollar fifty in a Snickers bar? Yeah, a dollar fifty in a Snickers bar. <laughs> Wait, Skinner. Aaron, please do not ask a minor that on that's TV. All you get. Good God, my friend. Oh, that's all you get. <laughs> what is going on, sir? How long you been playing? Uh, six years. Awesome. Oh, cool. Let man. me see your fingers. They long? Yeah, there oh, you go. Yeah, I, yeah. Those are guitar fingers. Yeah. I thought the question <laughs> is, not. if you tap them, do they tap on the glass a little? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was, I was, actually, I was really fortunate because I was raised by my grandparents, and Shorty Medlock was my grandfather, played in and out of country music bands all of his life, and, uh, you know, played around Jacksonville all of his life. And I was raised right along with him in the country music kind of Delta Blues type thing and 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 he they they let me you know go instead of making me do a certain something because my daddy looked at my mind said hey let me tell you this kid ain't gonna be no lawyer or no doctor (laughs) (laughs) may keep him out of jail (laughs) 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 but that's how you got your start though with your granddad and his band is it true i read it on wikipedia so it's probably uh, you know, not true, <laughs> but it says that you started playing with him in like eight. Well, years old. Johnny's parents used to go. Uh, Lacey, his sister, used to go to the square dances, uh, where my where my grand when he was in town playing, and he had these square dances in and around like different spots around Jacksonville, and Johnny's parents would come out. I remember them when I was a kid, seeing them come out to the square dances. So it it kind of formulated and kept going, and then finally when I joined the band the first time and we stopped off at my parents place we pulled up and ronnie gary and alan and i got out of the van and there sat my old man playing the blues on the porch and ronnie just walked up and said shorty play me something play me the blues you know my daddy goes okay here's a song called milk cow blues <laughs> and he played it for him and that was it you know therefore later on my old man was part of the inspiration for curtis lowe Oh, okay. So I was going to say that. I was wondering yeah. about that. And Johnny, for you at the house, I mean, you got you and Donnie and Ronnie 
three big time rock stars. What what kind of lease was it? A musical household that you grew up in? Or? I got tortured at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a little bit younger. I was the youngest yeah, one right. of all. Are you kidding? Yeah. Uh, no, it, again, my parents love country music. When we were kids, we had what the, the Wonderful World of Disney. Wow, what was it? The Perkins uh, Wow Kingdom, and uh, the Ed Sullivan Show, and the news. That was it. And then my dad usually was like, "Go move the mirrors on the TV so it can come in better." But uh, so we didn't have a lot to watch, yeah. you know. But music was always around. Did you feel pressure you know? to go into that industry, to the music industry? Did you feel pressure? Did I? Yeah. Did I feel pressured? I imagine no. with musical parents and musical no, brothers, if you would have came home being not an accountant, all. they would have been. My a mom bit upset used to with say, me. "You guys need to get a job." <laughs> <laughs> well, we're rock stars, mom. Yeah. That's your job. <laughs> but no, uh, not at all. I wanted to be a drummer because I was real shy, you know. So I was like, I want to be in the back, you know. I don't want to be out front. And then, of course, they all pressured. They did pressure me to start singing, you know. And and I liked it. And uh, you know, I had a lot of fun and playing the clubs around Jacksonville, Florida here. And and uh, there was no American Idol or The Voice. So, you know, we all went out and did it the way it was supposed to do. You know, you learn your chops. Is, is there a story behind Ronnie, Donnie, and Johnny, or is that just the way it ended up? Well, I have a uh, sister. You mean – you mean the names? Yeah, 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 yeah. I always say I have, a, and I do have a sis, sisters, Marlene and Darlene. <laughs> and then I always kid, I go, there's Lonnie, Bonnie, and Connie too, somewhere. <laughs> like that. But I don't know. You know, yeah. that's I've, I've been asked that. But Ronnie was named after uh, Ronald Reagan, and then Donnie was named after an uncle, I believe. And uh, myself, uh, I think my dad at times loved John Wayne so instead of calling me John it was Johnny you know so. I got you and I just worked out I mean it just worked out no uh, believe me we I've, I've thought about that too it's a southern thing yeah no I get it I get it uh my name is Jake I got a brother named Blake so <laughs> there you go. yeah uh we're all, almost all out of time. I knew man all I knew is that whenever my mom looked at me she called me Ronnie or Donnie I, knew, <laughs> I better get over yeah, it, was, quick. it was yeah. uh trouble yeah <laughs> there was trouble to be had yeah, you mentioned coming home and playing the venues around town. Do you guys have a favorite venue in the history of your time with Skinner that you've loved playing, at least here in town? Uh, for me, anywhere there's Skinner Nation out there, that's my favorite venue. Yeah. 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 Ricky, what about you, man? Same? Well, I mean, I'm with Johnny. Uh, anywhere that we can reach out and have the Skinner Nation – and the Leonard Skinner fans, that's my favorite place, you know. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. You know what? We really do. You know, bands say it all the time to people. Oh, I love our fans. And then they go backstage. And they're like, what a pain in the ass. They were. <laughs> you know, not for us. No. We love you guys. And we, we appreciate it. Look at it. 50 years. My wow. God. You know, and new generations. Every every you time. Know? You know, there's yeah. lots. You know? I mean, look, working at the Eagle, you wouldn't believe how many people have called in for this contest born in 1995 you know what i mean like it's crazy when oh, you yeah. think about it yeah. and yeah. you guys started at, at the hell house that's kind of like the genesis of leonard skinner yeah you remember hanging out there out as a kid Green coast springs yeah no i went out there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and you did it was some, just an old red i rehearsed house there. yeah yeah it kind of was it hot it was it as hot as it is in <laughs> it's here about that hot, yeah. uh, hotter <laughs> i tell you something we used to have to sleep we'd take turns sleeping out there and so when it was my turn one night, I slept out there, and it was miserable. Oh, yeah. I mean, just miserable. But anyway, finally fell asleep at about 4 o'clock in the morning. And I had a pillow in my kick drum. <laughs> so my head was in the kick drum, right? <laughs> the band comes in. Alan Collins sneaks behind the kick drum, and he stomped the <laughs> kick drum. Pedal. I reared up, smacked my head on the kick drum. I mean, never been the same since. <laughs> never been the same. <laughs> but it was miserable out there, I'm telling you. But you know what? That was some of the best times. When I think back on it, it was really some of the best times. Well, that, that heat, you know, makes steel. Woo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, and that's why you guys. A lot of great songs written out there. Yeah, yeah a lot absolutely. of great songs. Yep. A lot of great songs will be performed in the next couple of nights at St. Yep. Augustine Amphitheater. Leonard Skinner coming home to play the show. And we want to thank all you guys for showing up today yeah, and hanging you. out with us. It's thank you for coming. All right. And you keep the excitement. <laughs> Don't forget tonight at Whitey's, the big uh, party for the Hell House Whiskey. Oh, yeah, whiskey. Yeah, yeah. We're doing that. And what's it called here out there? Ross. Ross. What is it? 
Total Wine. We're going to be in Town Center on nice. Friday. And uh, uh, pretty cool. We uh, drink and drive responsibly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need that on my conscience. <laughs> I'm sure we could find but someone you know in the what? crowd. Hey, wait, we, can, I, can I say how we... Of course. We, Years ago, we partaked a lot in whiskey, and we had said, <laughs> no. no. Yeah. We said, you know what? We should come up with our own whiskey. Yeah. And this just kind of fell in our, our lap, and it, yeah, I think it's cool. You know, I can imagine anybody walking up to the bar. Don't you go there yet. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we got some grape juice for you, yeah. sir. <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, ordered to say, give me a shot of Hell House. Yeah. And I think that's really – and the cool thing about it is Gary was involved in all this, yeah. and everything we're doing, Gary's been been involved, and we miss him a lot, guys, to the fans out there. We yes. miss him, and uh, we miss them all, you know. But that, all I know is that they got one hell of a rock and roll band in heaven, so, yeah. you know, so they're all there. Big round of applause for Gary and uh, Johnny and Ricky. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you.